Wow, my head's gone off the screen. Hello, everybody. It's me again. <laughs> um, I just recorded quite well. I recorded a video. I thought it was quite good, but it got eaten by YouTube because apparently it was too long. It must have meant it was really bloody good, and they decided to take it down because you know, whew, 25 minutes of me going on and on and on about uh, ENFJs and INFPs in relationships must have been pretty tedious. Anyway. Um, firstly, I'd like to remind everybody that I am no expert at MBTI. This is all kind of, you know, I, I just think about it quite a lot. I think it's quite useful. I enjoy thinking about it and I enjoy your feedback because obviously I don't want to be sitting here telling everybody that I'm some sort of, you know, MBTI master when all I've done is thought about it for a few months. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video into two parts. It's actually about... Uh, last video I did was about ENFJs and bottled up thoughts. This is to do with, and I promised really a video to do with how ENFJs and INFPs can really work well together in relationships. And so this is what my what this new video is about. So I'm going to start by talking about what makes INFPs and ENFJs healthy in relationships rather than going on to the unhealthy part, which is what I did before and made it too long. Right, so um, basically uh, healthy ENFJs and INFPs in relationships, I believe, work really well because of a few different things. Now, you've probably heard of the typical kind of like idea that INFPs and ENFJs look at each other, they talk to each other, and they're like a mirror. Well, that doesn't really get us anywhere apart from telling us that they have opposite functions in the same order. It just tells us that it kind of feels like a mirror. Well, we want to kind of go a bit deeper than that, but also I want to try to explain why it's quite simple as to why it's so effective and why it really works, um, or why it could work, how it could work. Um, so the first point is that ENFJs and INFPs value uh, feelings over thinking which is they prefer it over thinking because that's how they're stacked so even though the ENFJ's first function is uh, FE the first function of the INFP is FI so they have extra, the ENFJ has extroverted feeling the INFP has introverted feeling um, so they value feelings quite strong you know both of them value feelings very strongly which is quite a nice feeling when you're actually managing to talk to somebody who you know when you meet somebody who values feelings that strongly as an ENFJ or an INFP I'm guessing um, they feel like the other party actually cares and therefore you know because obviously feeling functions you feel like the other person actually cares which is quite a nice feeling. So you get that feeling to start with. Um, but what I've found is that basically, because introverted feeling is introverted, by nature it doesn't talk about itself. Introverted feeling informs the INFP w while using all its other functions, usually, to explain to the INFP how they feel but they don't talk about it. Their communication tool is extroverted intuition, so they talk about ideas. But what the ENFJ should be good at, if they have well-functioning, good-functioning introverted intuition, is that they can pick out of the INFP's head um, how they feel. And that's quite... I suppose in some ways it's almost quite unnerving for the INFP, because most of the time they'll walk through life without anybody understanding how they feel and they'll walk through life thinking that nobody really completely gets them not everybody feels that way but uh, some people a lot of INFPs I feel probably do feel like nobody really understands how they're feeling and when somebody actually says to them you're feeling this because of this and I can feel it because I can feel your feelings and I can feel those because I have introverted intuition and explains to the INFP how they feel. It almost feels like they're being uh, pared down. They feel like they're almost naked, I suppose. You know, they're, they're, um, their feelings are laid bare, which 
is quite uh, probably quite shocking but also quite I think probably quite exciting for an INFP because they feel like someone finally understands them they get they get the feeling that someone actually gets what they what they mean and how they feel and they don't understand even why this person knows why the ENFJ knows because also the other thing about uh, introverted intuition is that of course you can't explain to anyone how it you can explain to people how it works but you can't really say to someone I know that because of if you have NI you can't you just go uh, I don't know how I know this but this is why I know it or no I don't know how I know this but I know this and then the other person's like I don't know how you know that but I just do so fine so um, this goes on to what the INFP does now healthy INFPs ought to be able to talk about their ideas which is what extroverted intuition is um, and this helps to I suppose the thing is is that because INFPs also value feelings over anything else when they talk about their ideas they are linked with how they feel just like the introverted intuition of the ENFJ is also linked with how it feel, how they feel about things so um, the the extroverted intuition uh, extroverted intuition which the INFP is using to express their their ideas is also linked to how they feel which I suppose is what what the introverted intuition is picking up on but it excites the ENFJ because what it does is it serves to kind of season um, the introverted intuition of the ENFJ so they come out with this wonderful you know INFPs come out with this wonderfully large kind of like big beautiful idea like very expansive thing with loads of ideas in it and they kind of point out the introverted intuition of the ENFJ uh, all these new possibilities and that's quite exciting ENFJs like that you know they, they kind of hear all these ideas and then they're able to internally crunch them up with their thinking and their intuition which kind of gives which also in turn then feeds back in the other end so what happens is the INFP will go these are all these ideas and they're really excited about them and the ENFJ goes wow they're really exciting and then they crunch up those ideas and they go to the they sit there thinking and they'll go so this and they'll come out with some big answer which the INFP will be like ah, I didn't see that either so it kind of like loops around like that um, now what this what happens is is that um, they bring each other's introverted functions out that's why that's how it works in fact all of the functions bring each other out so for example the FE which is a kind of accepting loving function which is there to understand it feels the other person's feelings as their own so it it's an accepting function uh, and that's quite quite uh, important for an INFP because FI can sometimes be um, quite you know feelings are personal to INFPs so if you burst them and break them INFPs can be upset about that so uh, if the fact that extroverted feelings accepting of of things is useful for FI introverted feeling because they feel like they're accepted which is quite important I think for INFPs um, but the other good thing about FI to an ENFJ and also what excites them about their introverted feeling is that introverted feeling in an INFP is incredibly complicated it's really complicated and there's nothing I don't think that really excites an ENFJ more than the complicated nature of the INFP's feelings so they're quite excited I think they get quite excited about knowing that the INFP has really deep feelings and lots of them so it's like wow I really want you know there's this feeling that the ENFJ is like I want to know everything about you and I want to get all of these feelings out and understand them all because that would make the FE feel like it's allowing the FI to talk and it kind of gives you a motivation to do it um, the same thing happens with um, NE and NI so NE like I was saying earlier extroverted intuition it's exciting introverted intuition is deeper so extroverted intuition provides the ideas introverted intuition kind of provides the answers 
uh, it sounds arrogant to say it's like saying, oh, my my function is better than your function. But the whole point of it is is that NE is much bigger. It is much larger than NI. So it's valuable in itself because it is providing all of the information or more of the information at the start. And NI is providing only some of the answers to some of those questions in, a, in an interesting way to the INFP. So that also excites the INFP because they feel like they're getting answers for their for these big intuitive structures that they may have built um, just like it's exciting for the ENFJ to have all of the kind of big uh, ideas um, then we come on to the sensing and the thinking which are like less important to both of these types but still I think click with each other and you can see how the FI and the FE kind of pull each other out of each other just like the NI and the NE pull each other out of each other and kind of inform the other one of the thing that's interesting. SE, extroverted sensing, is much more in the now. Uh, introverted sensing is more, I would describe it as sentimental. If you have a healthy INFP they have sentimental feelings to do with their past which is SI and it helps an INFP to have an SE user because even though it's kind of underneath our other functions it's still there to serve to bring the the INFP into the now and it's also quite nice to be able to kind of like be informed of you know, the INFP will probably be able to remember things that the ENFJ said that are nice for years later. Like, if they are healthy people, they can still remember these wonderful things that the ENFJ said to them that nobody else has ever said to them. And sometimes they'll mention it to the ENFJ, and the ENFJ will feel like, I've really made your life better. It, it feels rewarding to know that you weren't lost and forgotten when you express a kind thought to the SI user and they later come up with this thing of saying when you said this 10 years ago I felt that and I still feel that now it's nice for the SE user to feel that so those are both functions which again pull each other apart and inform each other and then the last function obviously extroverted thinking and introverted thinking now this is where it gets a bit, obviously these are both weaker functions and we're more embarrassed of, of our TI and TE as INFPs and ENFJs. Um, but TE, extroverted thinking, well-developed extroverted thinking is really motivational. So like where the ENFJ may get stuck in, in thoughts too much um, with NI and TI, the extroverted thinker will be going, will be like, this is what you need to achieve, this is where you need to get to, um, and this is how to do it. Uh, it kind of mimics, in a way, I think, um, a judging function. So, you know, the ENFJ is also good at completing things, whereas the INFP with perceiving is not always as good as doing, at doing that. But if you can harness the power of both TI and TE as these two types, you will have a, a whole strong person. So they're, they're both useful functions. And I think INFPs who have good NE and TE are really much better at being able to motivate themselves and move forward themselves because they have functions which they can both communicate with and get things done with. So it kind of makes it, it makes them more able to move to a, to a goal uh, as an INFP. Um, and again, TI is good for explaining uh, and informing about extra details which maybe the INFP may have missed. So, um, but I do feel like these functions are much more like the functions that we don't really we don't really use as much. I mean, obviously, when I've written this list out, I'm using my introverted intuition and my introverted thinking. So. Um, with developed functions of these types I feel that it really helps. So those are the reasons why I think these two types can really work well together and I'd like to know what you think and before I get to 15 minutes I'm going to stop and uh, let me know what you think and speak to you later. Bye!